We love you. We welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Please be seated. Thank you. God bless you. Um, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to come to share God's word. Uh, I've got to see from left to right. Okay. Uh, it's okay. At least I will do this. I'll dance left and right. But thank you for inviting me. Thank you for... Um, I told... Uh, Bishop, don't invite me. I'm getting older and older, you know. He, he's not listening, that's why. Uh, there are many sons who are here who are speaking so powerfully. You heard nephew, uh, David. I, I took some notes of the angle that he spoke. It's a privilege to share the same platform with you. It's, uh, yeah. And uh, that's an honor from God. Because, you see, when you hear such things, you know that these are men who are made by God. They are not shaped by men. They are not shaped. They are made by God. That is why they can stand here. I look forward for the day when uh, my son Samuel, I don't know where uh, he's walking. Did you pay attention to his testimony about the girlfriend and all that? <laughs> yes, yes, you did. You did. He's in the Bible College now. God is working. I know there are many uh, uh, Robinsons sitting around here. There are many Stevens, there are many Michaels and Davids who are all spread. You just don't know what God has for you in the coming days. If there are fathers sitting here, don't lose your hope over your children. Those who are watching online, don't lose your hope, don't lose your prayer. Hold on. You may be thinking that you don't have Prophets as your fathers or uncles to pray for you and tell you what God. Can the, can the uncles replace Jesus? No. No. But this one, all of you have it. Amen. It's right with you. God will speak to you through a dream. He will speak to you through a message. He will speak to you in worship. Listen. That is why one of the uh, greatest privilege of having encounters with God is not to show off that uh, how much you can prophesy is to guide the sons and daughters into the ways of God to hear from heaven and to tell I try not to unlike my uh, brother I, I usually don't tell any testimonies of my nephews or sons because then they will get to tell it themselves <laughs> if I say everything then they got nothing to say when they come up and uh, so I'm looking forward to hear more of David and, uh, and uh, Michael is already an established uh, speaker in uh, the conference and uh, also the other guys are all sitting here. Thank you for inviting. I tell you today's uh, greatest privilege of coming is that, uh, in fact I didn't want to come. I told thousand times I don't want to come. And so I saw David's photo. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> because I get to speak in the same conference with the nephew so I want to thank the Lord for that I pray fathers will remain as fathers because sometimes you see uh, this is not my word but I just want to finish and quickly start okay, I don't like to unnecessarily talk you know. there are sons who want to serve together with the fathers and when the time comes the sons don't want to come up the fathers wish the sons will come up and when the sons come up, the fathers rebel. We put them down. It must be that when the sons and fathers come, it's such an honor to serve together, to heal the body of Christ from all hatred, Amen. division and pain. We have to set an example that it is possible. Amen. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for this evening. I praise you. For all those who are watching online, I pray you'll bring healing to the sons and the fathers in Jesus' name. For those who are missing their fathers or missing their sons, I pray, Lord, while they are watching, there will be the reconciliation of the Holy Spirit. Bring the courage enough to call them and connect with them this week. That God will heal their hearts and differences, Father. I pray, Lord, that you will speak through me, anoint my words and anoint 
your sons and daughters who are listening. We will hear what the Holy Spirit wants to do and why he brought certain words into our hearts. We promise to honor the name of Jesus and your name only in Jesus' name. I had uh, such a struggle for two weeks, a very important, powerful spiritual warfare that was going on. So the Lord spoke to me, put in my heart what I'm su supposed to speak, but to sit down and do the work, all kinds of problems were going on. And then uh, last few days I said, okay, no matter what happens, drop everything and just do. And I, when I was spending time, I realized the enemy was blocking me from sharing what I need to say in this youth. Wow. I said, why is that so important? You know? Why the enemy thinks that uh, this meeting is so important? Exactly. Mm. Uh, it's just ordinary youths. Like what David said today, maybe some of you are smoking and drinking and we just don't know what else is going on. But God is seeing beyond your sin. Don't let your sin stop you, you know. God is seeing you beyond. God is seeing you beyond your disobedience. God is seeing you beyond your rebellion. God is seeing you beyond your challenges. He can give you a hug and touch you and speak to you like nothing happened. That's the ability of God. We are the one who's stopping ourselves from coming closer. Oh, I've sinned. Oh, I don't think so. God will speak to me. But He didn't say that. Amen? Amen. And that is why we are here. Because we have a Father who forgives. Amen. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. I was thinking, Lord, it, it's, it's going to be a little bit more deep. Will they understand? So my job is to speak the Holy Spirit's job is to translate and interpret to you. Amen. My job is not to worry whether you will understand. Amen. Because the devil is not worrying whether you do understand. Yes. He's doing everything he does to distract us, right? Yes. That means you can understand. Yes. You are deep enough to understand God's word. Amen. Somebody say Amen. Amen. You are not a shallow Christian. You are not on the shallow side. You are deep enough to welcome Jesus. Amen. To welcome Jesus you must be deep. Shallow people cannot welcome him. It's just because heaven, he's heaven. Amen. If you have Jesus inside you, you are deep enough. Amen. And I pray that uh, at, uh, tonight that God will just bring us into deeper. Amen. That these uh, sessions that we have from today, tomorrow, till Sunday, you'll just go deeper. Amen. And I, I, I want to thank God for my brother here. He's got such a voice, bro, I tell you. Such an apostolic voice he carries. You're going to retire. You can do other things. <laughs> it's good, you know. Then we got other territory to conquer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Every minute, 10,000 children are born. WHO is telling us. Every minute, 10,000 children. That means every minute you have 10,000 souls opportunity. Every minute you got 10,000 people to touch. You'll never lack ground on doing God's work. The problem is we are fishing on another person's pond. That's the problem. Just go out to virgin territories where souls are just floating and waiting to hear the gospel. Amen. The Spirit of God has been challenging me to speak uh, apostolically uh, tonight. It means more on a, the word of God to anchor you in the scriptures to also share with you what are the things that is going to happen in the coming days. We cannot be prophetic, we cannot be uh, Levites and we cannot be what the theme is saying for us to be if we don't encounter the challenges and I think that was the opening statement of David. You cannot uh, say you are an overcomer if there is not a challenge. You cannot say there is a victory without a challenge. And we must be bold enough, if you, are, if you are sick of being fought at, if you are tired of being put down, that's because the enemy is stirring you to stand up and fight. You are giving up just too easy. He's provoking you to fight. He's provoking you to stand up. 
and put on your gloves. He's provoking you to pray. He's provoking you to take the word. We are all the time clouding ourselves and thinking, Oh God, you know, you know the things I've done, it will take too long. I'm telling you how long it will take. Lord, forgive me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You start the fight. So I think that's what we are waiting for tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. There are three things that I want to share with you. In fact, many things, that, but it's all. The challenges to grow prophetically, which nobody wants to tell us. We think it will be as easy. We think that if we pray more, everything will just flow together and fall together. And we don't need to make decisions. We are defeated not in guidance. We are defeated in decision making. I want to tell you, dear ladies and gentlemen and young sons and daughters, your prayer life has got nothing to do with the attitude. Don't think that because you're praying more, your attitude is godly. No. Sometimes we just see the opposite. Prayer life, you are praying in the spirit. Good. But attitude takes a lot of effort to change. And you've got to accept that this is a season you're going through where the enemy will use your very rebellion to challenge you. And you will experience everything like a normal young man and woman. Every lust. Every challenge, in every level, in every season, from money to porn to, uh, to sex to whatever you can think about, which will be thrown as, as garbage, will come towards you. You need to learn how to tackle the hindrances, to spot the snares, and it's supposed to overcome the obstacles to grow prophetically. To grow prophetically is not an ordinary church member's call. You want to go one step further where you can hear God. I take full advantage of the ability to hear God when it comes to our family. And I thank God for the, you know, honestly, David is an easy guy to handle in the family. Easiest. So when he makes all these statements, it's the easiest guy to handle. <laughs> The nephews are, I don't know, maybe Sam is a little bit more hard, I'm not sure. Actually, when I think about it, when it comes to the word of God, they have never rebelled that level. Because they know that when we pray means it's that's there. We have said that. I'm asking you, do you have that credibility when you hear from God? Do you, do you have the credibility? It is not what you say, it's what you obey and what you do. Your life has to reflect that you are hearing from God. We want others to hear what we say, but they have to first see that you are reflecting what you are saying. You've got to pay that sacrifice, isn't it? But I want to tell you honestly, sometimes sons will overtake the fathers. That's the truth. And I pray that many will be touched, and all those who are watching online will be touched in this season that God is raising up. Three things that this parable is teaching us in Matthew chapter 13. And I pray that you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit tonight to go deeper in the word of God. Amen. 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 There are three parables that are given that Jesus spoke about the kingdom. The parable of the weeds in verse 24. We want to tackle tonight as much as we can. The parable of the weeds. Uh, I will stop either before 10 or when I see you falling asleep like that, when you are showing me you are already in the parable, I will stop. <laughs> okay? No point ministering to sleeping people. Very easy. We'll continue tomorrow. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> there are three things, but I want to tackle it in such a different way, you're going to get shocked. Amen. Amen. Number one, there are opposition to the kingdom. And how does this opposition come? Number one, he plants false brethren amongst us. False Christian friends among yourself. Or among your friends. That's the tactic of the enemy. Plant false people who uses the same Bible, go to church, 
where you think they are okay, but they are leading you to the false side of their opinions. And the second thing he does, he encourages, listen carefully, a false growth. You are reading the same Bible, you are doing the same prayer, but you are not growing. You smell like a Christian, but you don't have the incense of God. So there is an encouragement of a false growth. Usually, when you are adopting a sinful lifestyle, you will try to smell nice when you come to church. And you are pretending that is a false growth. What is the difference between the first pioneers and the sons of the pioneers? And many of you are sons and daughters. The challenge is, we accepted Christ, then we came to church. But you are born in the church, you see. And you have not accepted Christ yet. You think you know about Jesus, which you know, but you have not made Him as your personal Lord and Savior. And so you will struggle through how come I'm a sinner when I'm actually born? I'm, my whole life, I'm listening to God's word. I pray and all of that. But until you make that decision to make Jesus as the Lord and Savior, your salvation is not complete. There will be a sense of false growth. And there are many who go through a very shallow experience thinking they are names are registered when they are not. So therefore today, whether your name is written in the Lamb's book of life or not matters to God. It doesn't matter if you are seven days coming to church without you saying, Jesus, tonight I give my life to God. Because the day you say that, that the spirit of falsehood that the enemy is trying to plant, that seed will die. It's like a leech that attacks. You see, leeches will only drop when they are full. When they have sucked out everything they can out of you. And so in the, in the military we learn uh, there are few things they'll have to do. You know, I tell you some of funny things, but I'll tell you the decent things. The knife, when you to cut and pull it out, that will bleed you sometimes. Fire that can burn you. And they carry a special liquid. And they got to pour. It's like a, a, a small acid. It will just drop off by itself. And that's what the leech does. And there are people who are like leech, who can come and bring falsehood. In the, and the third way is to introduce deceptive teaching concepts. Are you sure God really said that? Wow. Wow. You will form your own ideology, your own system of thinking, putting different scriptures and pulls everything together to justify your position. I don't have to be like this, but... And so the, the enemy will introduce all those three are mentioned in these parables. All that I've said. But in order to introduce the depth of what I'm going to say, I need to give you a very a simple and a important uh, 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 introduction. Number one, I think it has been said for us, I want to tell you, I want to say the phrase with me, plant the seed. Are you with me? You see, the kingdom of God is in you, and the Bible says the kingdom of God is like a seed. You've got to plant it. Because if you don't, you will not grow. Oh, but I'm hearing it. No, it's a seed you must plant. Everything you hear is a seed. Tonight you hear such a long examples and it's, it, it, it's not just a, a, a beautifully corrupted sermon. It's life principles. And when you hear all these, probably some of us collected in the first session, probably about 10 seeds. You already collected some 10 lessons you collected. Are you going to plant the seed? Because until you plant the seed, it will not grow. We have been hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. But until you say today, I take that and I'm going to plant that seed, then it will grow. The scary moment for me being a father is that when my children grow up, they have to make their own decision to accept Christ. And I can't do anything about the world 
challenging them. I can't do anything about it. I got to stand in the sideline and see my children running through the race. Wow. Wow. You see, because that's God's time. And no parent, no prayer life, no counsel can interfere. Why? Because God is writing your own testimony. You do not save because of me. You got saved because Jesus died for you. Amen. So therefore God is writing your testimony. God wants to give you a platform to speak. You know, so I, I came to church because you know what? I just born inside the church. All right, sure. What is your testimony? God is writing that. You got to plant the seed because the kingdom of God is in you. But I want to shock you. Are you ready? Yeah. Now, uh, do you have the ESV version? Do you have that? You have. Say yes. Say yes. No. It's time to repent, brother. You, I told you many times, when I'm coming, y'all don't play this game. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. I want to show you something. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Now, New King James is a favorite version. I'm not, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just using yes. Please don't get me wrong. Luke 17, 20. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready for this revelation? Yes. 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 Now when he asked, was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, when? Jesus answered and said, the kingdom of God does not come by what? The kingdom of God doesn't come by you listening to it. It doesn't come you observing it. It doesn't come by you admiring everybody. Yeah. Oh, what a great ministry. It only comes when you plant the seed. Yeah. There's a lot of people in the church, they're observing. Yeah. That's true, that's true. They're enjoying, they're clapping, they're coming along, they're tagging along, but they have not inside. They're just, at least, you know, I come to church, Lord. I'm struggling. My heart is not in. But at least I'm coming. You are still under the observation roll call. But people who are observing their lives will not be changed until you plant the seed inside you. Amen. You may not be able to plant ten, but at least in this conference, pick up five. Amen. At least pick up five. Five is always a number of grace. You may not know how to plant, just ask Lord, you plant it for me. Amen. You pluck out what needs to be taken out. Because whenever you plant the seed of God's kingdom, there needs to be an exchange. Amen. Without the exchange, you'll be overcrowded. And then we, we, we sang the worship song, Sacrifice. What is it, one thing you're willing to give up? Because if, if this conference is to be a success, then there must be an exchange. Something of you died and something of God was planted in. Amen. It is not just hearing because there are many, in fact too many people are observing the kingdom. They are not planting the seed. Because the next, the next line tells us, for the kingdom of God is what? Within you. That's what verse 21 says. Verse 20 says, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. And you, can you put on verse 21, uh, uh, Luke 17, 21. Now the, the Bible says, the kingdom of God is within you. Wow. Where is the kingdom? Is it somewhere? No, it's within you. It will not be activated until you're willing to plant the seed. And so tonight I want to encourage you, Activate the promises of God. Accept the kingdom. Amen. Why are you struggling all the time? I may not be holy enough. Don't struggle. Don't struggle with your unholiness. Accept the holiness of God. The unholiness will be kicked out. Yes. God has to win so that the enemy can lose. Amen. The problem is I think we are trying to fight the enemy by ourselves. Enough so that God will see you are holy to come in. But without God, you can't be holy. Without God, you cannot be clean. And our Lord Jesus Christ is the only God, only and the only on planet earth and the universe who comes down when the vessel is unclean. Because he died for sinners. 
it is something till today. I'm walking with God for 36 years. I still cannot reconcile it. I cannot understand the magnitude of His love and His holiness, the mercies of God. The kingdom of God is within you. We are struggling with this kingdom because I am praying so my attitude must be right. You find it opposite. Oh, I am praying so I should be loving but you find it opposite. I am worshipping more. You will be stronger than you find opposite because we are still in an observation status. You have not planned the kingdom inside. You have not activated the kingdom of God to work for you. And that is why the children who are born in the church and grew up in the church, you will struggle a lot more than those who accepted Christ and just came in. And all those who are fathers and mothers who are, you are married now and you still don't have children yet or your children are young and you're going to bring them up, keep this in mind. Our children will come to know and must come to know the crossroads of Jesus Christ. And sometimes I find our children sometimes accept Christ in Sunday school, but the conviction of sin comes in their youthful life. Because they don't have any conviction when they are what, 15, 5, 4, 3, I accepted Christ, Sunday school. Yeah, but accepting Christ is not saying yes. It is the conviction of sin that requires the Savior, right? Yes. You get what I'm saying? So that only the Holy Spirit can bring. And that is where sometimes our children, listen children, listen, are you listening? Yes. Don't get confused if you, ex- if you have to accept Jesus twice. Amen. Amen. Don't doubt your first salvation. That one you did because your children, or you, were, you, you were right at that moment. Yes, yes, yes. But your salvation is complete when you have this conviction of sin. Yes. That's when it will anchor yes. you straight into the kingdom. Amen. Today, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And so we have to pray to that. We have to have this conviction. And that's the scary thought of every parent. Just like me listening to uh, 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 David. What? You did all these things. Many parents, all of us, we have high level thoughts. That's true. Of our children. Our children have learned how to be kingdom observers. They put the kingdom look. The kingdom makeup. You give the kingdom smile. But inside you are struggling. And I want to tell you, only Father God can see, because He sees you beyond our face. He sees the daughter who is struggling. He sees the son who is struggling to say yes to the kingdom, because you think that if I plant this seed of the kingdom inside me, then I have to give up a lot more. I've got nothing to hold on. And everything you have to give up. You have to give up. You have to give up. And like what we heard. And actually, what are you giving up? You're rubbish. Why are you crying over what you're giving up as rubbish? I gave up my smoking. Yeah, but that's rubbish, right? You did not give up gold, silver. Why I gave up my bad habits? That is rubbish. Why are you crying about giving up your rubbish? Have you ever thought about it? You know, I give up everything. You just gave a pile of rubbish and dump. And you're talking nonsense like you gave your silver and gold. In it, do you can you believe a God who's willing to take over the rubbish? You see, other false gods they want your gold and silver, but Jesus came to give you life, He takes away that. How you can even pride yourself before God? You know, I followed Jesus and I gave up everything. What? What are you talking about? The angels cannot even recognize you when he talks. Say, what did this fellow give? In the level of sacrifice, it's not even written. You know? Zero. What did you give up? Oh, you got to give up my boyfriend. So, no. what? You gave up a boyfriend? Yeah, big deal. Next. Come on, try to impress me. <laughs> Are you with me? Don't be impressed by your rubbish. Be impressed by your sacrifice for God. That. Is the highest level. The first level is just giving up because God wants you to just be right with Him. That's true. Just... 
activate the promises of God. 1 John 2, 27 says, as the anointing abides in you, you need to abide in him. So as the kingdom of God is already residing in you, you need to abide in the kingdom. If not, you will be in an observation status. What you have not activated will not work for you. I've been hearing, you know, uh, I've been hearing about giving whole life, like in this church, there's a lot of love offering being collected for many, many different things you do, but how come am I still struggling? Because you are hearing, but you have not activated. Oh, thank you. Wow. Activation comes by giving. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you drop a dollar inside. Wow. According to your level of faith, according to your income. Yes, yes. I, I, I had everything when I was 16 years old. In one pocket, you know, this Pentecostal fellas, right? Put your hands into the pocket. Everybody says that. Take out whatever that is there. And put it into the offering bag. And so by the time you forgot, I had only my bus fare to go home. 25 cents. 1985. 25 cents. And that's a lot of miles to walk back. It will take probably... An, 45 minutes from, 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 uh, uh, from Raffles to Topai, right? Okay, preacher said, 25 cents, put in the offering bag. So I decided to walk. It's not a big deal. It's not like a jungle. I just walk. And one church member, the most stingiest girl that I ever know in our church, <laughs> saw me walking by. She screams from the bus. The station is coming. Hey! Why are you walking? Nah, I just like to walk, you know, smile, show off the, the cool thing. No, 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 you come, 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 I want to talk to you. I'll pay for you, don't worry. What? Don't be stupid after that, just go. <laughs> God was not looking how much I gave. He was saying that I, all that I have, I just gave it away. So I decided the next time I go to the meeting, don't put anything in the pocket. <laughs> but you see, God is looking at your heart. You may be a student. You may not have much. But there are some giving that will change your entire course of history. It could be the dollar God was itching because he is planting that seed in the kingdom. And you keep saying, but God, I don't have what they have. Please don't. They are struggling. You have what you have and just give. Are you with me? Yes. And he said, maybe I don't have anything. You come from a poor life. You do have the most one thing God is running after. Your life. If you got nothing to give in the offering bag, put your life in. Amen. That's a lifetime security. That God wants to give you. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 14 says, now I'm giving you an intro, it's an important intro. Because sometimes we forget in all the advanced teaching, basic things like that we forget. Second uh, Peter chapter 1 verse 4 says, For God has granted to us. Can you say the word granted? granted. What does the granted mean? It means it's given to you. You don't need a dictionary to explain in it. God has granted to you His precious, very great promises. He's granted to you. My job is to activate the promise. Amen. You need guidance. You need healing. You need wisdom. David shared, we all will go through a season, a stage of admiration. You'll admire somebody, they will admire you. Your Christian conscience will be working against you to say yes, which one is the right. There is no such thing right before you know what is wrong. Are you with me? You'll have to say, make some wrong decisions before you can say right. And when you make the wrong decision, Jesus is not going to run away from you. He's walking closer to you. Don't reject yourself. Don't go under this performance pressure that I got to be so accurate and so right. Because none of us can. I can tell you all the right things today I'm doing because I learned it from making the wrong things then. Most preachers, we only say the good parts. God knows the other reverse part of the story. 
what brought the good lessons. There were some bad lessons. Amen. Activate the promises of God because second period. Hey, what happened to the scriptures? Grow. ESV then they evaporated. Hello. New King James is approved. Okay, come on, show me. Second Peter one four. Are you are you putting up? You see now you know how I'm anointed. I commented and it's gone. No no no. Okay, get it back. Those who are watching online, Second Peter one four. The Bible says when you activate the promises of God, two things will happen. You will partake of God's divine nature and you will escape the corruption. Wow. You are struggling to escape the corruption to partake the divine nature without activating God. Without God, you cannot overcome. Without God, you cannot overcome a sin. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot even touch your Bible. You need God to pull you towards worship. So I'm so desperately addicted to the Holy Spirit because I need Him. Now, please don't think that I, I need Him when I was 15. Even today, I need Him even to finish a three days fast. I need Him. I say, please help me to finish the fast without interruption. The longer the fast, the, the greater my fear would be. Because I'm no longer as free as I was. I'm busy now. The goal of fasting is not, not eating food. It's hearing His voice. And the courage to obey what the Lord is telling me to do. Many of us have so much of God's guidance, but we, we lack the courage to obey. So I need the Holy Spirit to help me to obey because certain obedience is going to affect your relationships. Certain obedience is going to affect the unity of the church. Certain directions is going to derail others who are hanging by by the bus but don't want to come and sit. They are the observers. The observation of the kingdom. And so sometimes as pastors and leaders, we will be put to the test. Are you willing to drive the bus where the Lord is asking you to go? You get what I'm saying? Granted to us precious promises. Great promises. I don't want to even talk about the Greek of the word great and all of the different things. You'll just enjoy the precious word, but the, the scripture says so that you will be a partaker of the divine nature. You see, you cannot partake of God's divine nature if you don't admire holiness. Amen. If you don't admire to be clean. If you don't admire to be pure. Mm -hmm. wow. What is purity? You define yourself, whatever that is to you. Because God is not wanting to embarrass you and me, you see. It doesn't matter how many times you slept with the wrong person. But God is not counting that He's waiting for you to say yes to Him. Amen. To purify you. you. I want you to understand that. Why? Because there is a magic law in the kingdom. To him who has been forgiven much, yes. loves much. Yes. He's waiting there. How can I say you are forgiven much? That means He's allowing you to walk through the depths of sin, isn't it? Whoa. The hardest part. As a parent, I fear. And my sons and daughters that they grew up in church have to walk through. Why? Because God is writing their story. And their story doesn't have my name on it. It has His name on that. Activate. To partake the divine nature. To escape the corruption that is to come. You have to activate the promises which is, has your name on it. You got to cast that check. Everybody's got one. Somebody say amen. amen. Everybody got one. What, whatever you want to write and use the check for, you got to name your sin and say, God, help me to escape. Help me to get out of it. Because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. The holiness that is in me is greater than the lusts that is there. The purity in me is greater than the one who's trying to seduce me. The guidance of God in me is greater than the confusion that is there. I love the house of God. My love is greater than someone who's trying to derail me. And what does the girl ask the wrong question? 
you love your uncle more than us that's a magic question never come close to the ankles bro i tell you we will bulldoze you down plant the seed come on say the word plant the seed the seed is the word of god now again i want to just go a little bit in the word of god a little bit so that all of us can see together are you enjoying god's word yes let's all of us see together before we just go a little bit deeper let's turn to mark chapter 4 uh, go to verse 15 the bible says the seed is the word of god every time i need to preach god's word i need to plant the seed inside me first you cannot prophesy if you don't have the seed you cannot hear from god if you don't have the seed if you are getting prepared to hear from god then you got to go through a week of planting the seed and when you plant the seed and god takes from that word that you have planted and speaks to you Amen. which is the scripture that i must turn open the bible and keep reading then matter don't get struggling you can read anything but god will put his magic hand inside and pull out a scripture for you the preacher will preach and he will say you know what i prepared something but god wanted me to say something else just for you a sermon will be crafted out just for you god has his power you will turn on a christian radio station and someone will say something someone will walk past and say something else god has this power god can make people unknown to you and give you a word you just have no clue everybody will struggle just to give you a word you got to activate the seed is the word of god and the word of god will be activated when you plant it amen, amen. amen. okay here we go and these are the ones who are along the path you know there are four different types i want you to pay attention very quickly the first one are planted along the pathway the observers the bible says who comes immediately satan he didn't come because they invited him to come he just comes immediately because as long as the word is along the wayside of your heart he comes immediately it attracts him see the word of god is even a powerful weapon in the hands of a child and so as long as it's on the wayside or you listen to the word of god you hear and drop it the other way without planting in and so sometimes you have to pray god i may not understand everything that was said but because it is the word of god planted in me my mind may not process the depth of what is being said but your spirit understands so plant it in me it may not be for today like david said it it will be for tomorrow so let it be inside me than outside me because you may be thinking why i've been hearing the word of god but nothing is activating because satan has already took it away because he did not activate it the condition of your heart you see this parable tells you it got nothing to do with the preacher it got nothing to do with the preaching was boring or exciting it all has to do with the condition of the heart Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. are you with me yes. Amen. i was fasting for 21 days since the children are here it's a good time to say give some children testimonies how's that i was fasting for 21 days about the biggest challenge of my life samuel was probably about four uh, four years old i think maybe five and uh, he he only speaks english at home and he can't speak tamil as much you know our mother son right and i was fasting for 21 days i slept in a different room the whole day is fasting and praying and praying till i just drop to sleep that's all that that's what the intensity of the life struggles i was going through at the time then this fellow comes up wakes up in the morning and and he kept on singing a tamil song yes yeah, samuel he kept on singing like 25 times Okay, can you be quiet i'm praying oh we have a brush some more hair brushing so he came and he kept on singing this song right that that phrase and i'm asking god speak to me so samuel sing slowly we have a brush lord speak to me and say i am speaking to you you're not listening i said when what i sent your son to sing that song to you did you pay attention 
I said, what? Samuel, can you please sing? But he can't now remember. He, yeah, I don't know how to sing. I said, no, no, no. Earlier, he didn't tell me. He's telling the music that he's five years old. He's playing this music. I wrote that in my book. Uh, uh, uh. And that song says, no matter what a thousand people can say to you, what one word from God is the thing that you need to set you free. It doesn't matter what thousand people are saying. One word from God. Can you imagine that? One word from God. The kingdom of God is within. So number one, I want to ask you, there are many people are uh, sitting here and those who are watching, which part of your heart describes this parable? Number one, those who are by the a path and the Bible says immediately say the word immediately. immediately doesn't mean the devil doesn't wait he knows you are the pathway Christian immediately he doesn't he comes he doesn't wait for you he got nothing else to do because he steals you see <laughs> immediately he comes and then verse 16 uh, there is another group of people whose heart is planted by the rocky ground they've got no root no root and they are not deep and what the Bible says immediately they fall away look at the uh, yeah immediately they receive with joy and then verse 8 uh, 17 will say they will fall away all these are immediate actions very interesting they have no root you sing you read you worship but you've got no root yes. you challenge because why the kingdom is not planted yes. you're observing you're listening. You're going through all your Christian acts, but it's not planted. And they, now they are the rocky ground. And all of us, listen, regardless of how prayerful, spiritual you are, regardless of who you're born to, you all have to, we all have to walk through these four grounds. You're not exempted from it. You will not skip the next level. Everybody have to walk through the same one. So when it's your turn, we are there cheering you, finish the test well. That's why God will bring prophets to cheer you up. Amen. It's your test. No one can skip it. And sometimes, you know, I give my best advices to my children. They will not skip that price. They have to walk through it. Because sometimes we think prophecies will help you to skip. Prophecy will establish you stronger to go through. Not skip. Amen. Because those lessons plan are designed by God. And if God designs it, no one can skip it, regardless of how strong you pray. It's like facing your monster supervisor the next morning. After praying all through the night, you still have to face him in the morning. Joshua was so afraid. God, they're going to fight me. And God said, the battle is mine. What a relief. But tomorrow, put on all your thing and face them. What? You just gave me a promise. Yeah. I give you, it's mine, but facing your enemy is still yours. You got to face your demon. You got to face your temptation. You got to choose God and not the temptation. Before you have that power to say that, sometimes you have to trip and fall. You got to decide whether are you the alongside, the enemy will ask you a question. Are you the Christian along the path? No. Is your ground rocky? Maybe you are in that season. There are no roots yet. It is too dry. And then we come to the third one. The third one is a very interesting thing. Satan don't have to uh, get involved because they do it by themselves. The third ground in verse 18, some are planted along the thorns. The cares of this world, the deceit of riches, and the desire for other things, it comes in and, and, and tell me what it next line. How is that possible that something else or the elements of this world has the power to choke the word of God? How is that possible? You know, I'm asking this question for 30 over years. How is that possible? But till today, it happens in me. If I love any other thing more than God, it chokes it. If I feel a choke, throw it away. Sometimes parents, you can love your children and your family more than God. It chokes you, bro. Put it aside. Let God take care of things. It's natural to do that, but it's not natural for the kingdom. God wants to tell you that below, before they were your children, they were mine. 
and they're still his. Isn't it? Tell your neighbor, I belong to God. You'll be surprised what the scripture is saying. So I was wondering when David was speaking, he almost stole half of my notes. I don't know what else to speak now. <laughs> it's true. You'll, you'll see when I'm coming. The Bible says they choke the word and make them what? Unfruitful. Come on. Say that with me. English word. Unfruitful. You wonder why you're unfruitful? Because something is choking you. Something is hindering that growth. You got to check on your system. Something is forcing that growth when you're planting the seed there is something there that is not allowing to go deep because when certain seeds are planted in the shallow they will die hmm. wow. i don't know whether satan comes or not but in my property the rabbits come <laughs> the deers come the raccoons come they kill the chickens they stick the eggs bro nobody messes with my chicken man i tell you <laughs> There is only one judgment when he touched my chicken. Shoot to kill. After that I pray, God, please forgive me. <laughs> Those who are watching online, I'm a good pastor actually, true. <laughs> you see now, Satan is not involved. You see, in the, the, the third level of test that we have to go through, Satan don't get involved when you run after the desires of this world. All of us, oh, this is my dream car. Why? A car is a car. What is that to dream about? You've got a money, you can buy it. Uh, people always tell me, you know, ah, you know, it's like, if I will buy this car, I'm willing to die for it. Really? I'll pay you. You buy it and you die, please. Because you're irritating me. <laughs> That's not willing to die for. There is no nothing that you have a dream. Your dream is God and God will give you your heart. He chooses for Isn't that greater? And sometimes you choose small but God chooses big. Amen. He chooses something that you can afford. And what God gives you now may not be forever because He blesses you in stages. Amen. Amen. There are many things we ask but you're not ready for that blessing. So He waits until the time comes. So meanwhile, don't let those things choke you. Don't let riches deceive you. Don't let the desires for other things choke the word of God out of you. People don't want to come to church because if I become holy, then I can't do some stuff. But those are the stuff that are going to choke God's word out of you. That's right. And you'll get sick of what you're doing. You'll come back to God. And the process is the same. Unfruitfulness. That God wants to make you fruitful. There is only one passage and there is only one heart which is allowed, which is the good soil. The Bible says the good soil, you receive the word of God and here you hear it, you accept it and you bear fruit. You see the word accept it? Earlier we said activate the kingdom. Until you accept the seed, it's not going to work inside you. Until you activate the word of God in you. It's not going to work in you. No point thinking, oh, I got to break my generational curses. How many times you want to break? People break without planting the seed. Nothing's going to happen. Right. You. you can break as long as you like. You. you got to plant the seed of the right seed of for your generation. It ain't not going to work. Amen. A lot of people are caught into this cycle of uh, uh, renouncing. Okay, great. Then after renouncing, plant the right seed. If not, the demon will come back. Wow, he brings seven others again. Yes, yes. I don't think so. You want to cough again, right? He's the coughing expert, I tell you. <laughs> we have our own brand, Jesus, my king, tissue paper. Everywhere he goes, cough the demon out. <laughs> Some people are endless coughers. I don't know which demon is coming from their mouth, man. I don't know. But somehow it has to stop. You know when it stops? When you plant the seed. You got to stop the hole somewhere along the line that is coming in. Plant the seed and the enemy will leave you. Are you listening? Amen. Are you listening? Oh, God, I'm struggling. I can't read the Bible. Just shut up and read. Amen. Until the seed takes over. Amen. There's a lot of seed planted in my ground. You know what's most amazing? The, you know when the cross pollination 
Uh, the birds plant some seeds. Uh, the squirrels take some seeds from here and plant. The bees are planting cross-pollination. And when the rain comes, every seed that is on the ground gets rooted and it's growing. As long as your water is going to grow. Are you with me? And so are you ready to now come to the opposition of the kingdom? I got to tell you this before I can lead you into the opposition. Let's do this for 15 minutes and we're going to pray, okay? 15 minutes and we're going to pray. So don't, don't lose your mind on me. Now keep there. Keep it going. Are you ready? The first lesson the Bible says in uh, Matthew chapter 13, 1, 3, and then we go to verse 24. He put another parable before them saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed a good seed in his field. Now if you look at verse 36 onwards, that parable of the weed is uh, translated for you what it means. So we will take both and we will understand together. The first level of all of us that we have to grow is the parable of the seed, or the weed. The lesson we learn is getting the muscles for confrontation. Learning to fight the enemy. You must have this ability to confront. The ability to get sick of defeat. To get sick of all the time saying, I don't know what God is telling me to do. What are you saying? You don't know when he said, come to me and I will show you what to do. It's not that you don't know. You just don't know how to come inside. You're standing outside and wish that God will throw you some crumbles. Like begging from people, Lord, please. You know, please, I'm homeless. God, please. Please, somebody give me a word. No, come to the Father's house. It's your Father's house. You do the same thing. What the other fellows are doing? Come, close the door and pray. Huh? Hello? The problem is you all have a door which you don't want to close. I'm talking about your literal room. Close the door and pray. Close the door and pray. All that you got to do is this 10 minutes with Jesus. Tonight, try it. Close the door, kneel down. You know the Bible says, close the door, kneel down and pray to the Father in secret. And he will listen. It, it works. I ask, how can God can speak to Sadhu but he doesn't speak to me? So I said, okay, close down, uh, pray, kneel. And then he started speaking. He was waiting for me to come. The father wait, and this rule has never changed. I can say, God, give me a quick word. Conference is coming. No, come and sit with me. No, no quick words. All You come and sit. I want to, I want to bless you in the right way, not a quick way. Amen. There's a lot of difference in a right way and a quick way. You say, God, but I don't have time. Sorry, when you have time, come and see me again. Because when God is not there, time is irrelevant. And that is why I tell you, people who have time, they keep saying they have done time because God is not involved in it. When God is involved, every time is accounted for. Are you with me? Your time. You will not wish you want to die. You want to wish that God will extend your life. Because now God is involved in every moment of what you're doing. And once you're past 50, your countdown is down. That means now I've got to do more. Everything I want to do is sure. Because my time is going downwards for me. But some people overtake their sin. And they cut it short of the time scale given by them to God. Every time you smoke, you drink, and whatever else you are doing, you are telling the Creator, I don't want this lifetime that I've given to me. Let me cut short. People die of a heart attack because they drink and they smoke. People die of different disease and sin because they cut it off. And the Bible says, the Bible says that the divine judgment that is waiting for on that day will come to you while you're still alive. Because you told God, I don't need all this time you have given to me, say 70 or 80. Let me cut it short myself because I don't appreciate life. And there are many people who are in their dark stages of their life. And then they make all this prayer. See, I've been in the ministry 
long enough, I've seen people dying there, praying with them and going through their end stages and see young men, sons and daughters dying because of certain words that God has given they don't do. I've seen young fellows commit suicide, the fellows that I ministered to because they were struggling with that sin. I've seen young girls getting married to the long, wrong uh, guys from the hood because they don't pay attention because they think the fellow is saying, I love you, I love you. What is love without meaning? Are you so easily impressed? Are you that shallow? I think you are deep enough to know tonight that God is love. I don't get love at home. That is normal love. This is divine love. No parent can give you that divine love Jesus can. Amen. I wanted to see the opposition of this challenge at the moment. The Bible says the good seed. Now, are you ready for the revelation now? Yes? yes? I don't know, three people said yes. yes. Okay. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while his men were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. I wanted to pay attention. What happens when you are sleeping from God at the wrong times? There are some times you sleep from your spirit and something happens. The enemy comes to plunder. Because while you are awake, he cannot do anything. Because some of us, we are awake. And say, so he waits for you to sleep. He waits for you to sleep down. He waits for you to build up the wrong company. So I want to give you four things that happens. I can tell you a lot more, but I'll give you four things that happen. What happens when you sleep with the wrong person in the spirit or emotionally or in the natural? Number one, you'll lose your anointing. You please go and interview Samson. Yes. That's true. Thank you. Please interview Samson and tell you what happens. I tell you what's the interesting about Samson. We are not going to. I wanted to take notes, but uh, not go because we won't have time. Judges chapter sixteen verse fourteen. The first challenge. The Bible says when Samson slept, Delilah took the seven locks of her hair. He said yeah. he was sleeping. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he, the first one was not the cut. The, the challenge, you know, tied up, and she shouted the Philistines, and he woke up. The first game, he slept. And the second game in verse 19, Delilah made him to sleep. Some of us, we like this touch, isn't it? Yes, rough and rough. Children always like that. So she made him to sleep. Made him to sleep. And, the, and he shouted, oh, the fellas are coming. This time it happened real way. But in verse 8, there was another thing. He said, if you bind me, no one can hold me. And the assumption now is, I've, I've checked all the Hebrew words and how it says, the assumption is, when you bound me, I will not, and then he was sleeping. Because how can you bind him when he's still awake? And she shouted out. He woke up again. The third time when he was sleeping, that was the real game. You see, you lose the anointing every time when you sleep your way through when God is about to touch you. How is that possible? We can watch a two-hour movie and you can remember the tissue paper they took and you can't even remember 30 minutes of a sermon. How is that possible? You remember every action, every statement. But when it's the word of God, you shut down on a Sunday service because that is a spirit that is causing you to sleep. Because you're an observer of the kingdom, you're not paying attention to what God is about to say. Oh, God. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Do you realize Proverbs chapter 6 verse 10 says, Poverty comes when you oversleep. Yeah. It comes like a thief. Yes. Because you're so used to sleeping, you don't even know poverty is coming. Ah, it's okay, tomorrow I can work. Oh, tomorrow it's okay, I can go through another day. I don't want to work. It's okay, God will see me through. And then, those are the speakers of the lazy people, bro. Listen, your prayer life has got nothing to do with your laziness or activeness, you see. You can be lazy and still be prayerful. Oh God, money is going to come. No, money comes when you move your bum out and work. 
You see, God is a God of order, you know. He cannot be telling another fellow to work hard and I'll bless you and you get to, get, get to sleep and pray in your body. <laughs> and God gives you money. That means God is breaking His law. Everybody has to work hard. You cannot be promoted in your work if you're not diligent in your workplace. If you don't excel with that spirit that God is watching over you, you can't be promoted. Are you with me? The Bible, uh, the third one, the Bible says, remember the parable uh, of the foolish virgins and the wise virgin. The Bible says both of them were sleeping. You see, sleeping can produce procrastination. Yeah, yeah. The wise virgins, they also slept, but they had oil in their lane. Amen. The foolish virgins, always foolish virgins, they slept like the wise one, but they had no oil. They procrastinated. And when the bridegroom came, can you please give me oil? You know, sometimes you think in this passage, if these fellows are wise and they are godly, why didn't they give and share? Do you know sometimes the only way to teach you a lesson is to cut down every door of grace and mercy over your life. Your friends will become your enemy on that day. Nobody will answer your text and your call. Everybody will be busy. Nobody will be uh, in, in their thoughts. You will not be there. God is cutting, cutting off all excesses that only you will call out to God. That passage tells us procrastination. And look at the, and, and, and the and verse uh, uh, in Matthew 26, 40. Jesus asked his disciples, can't you just pray with me? Because he saw his disciples sleeping. A prayerless life will cause you to lose what God is giving into your life. Just sleeping, you know, this subject is just about sleeping. Because when they were sleeping, the enemy came and planted. There are times when God will ask you to be awake and pray for your life, for your concerns. It's not going to come by you googling and telling Instagram and Facebook and whatever not. So I used to say Facebook and Samuel said, you're, you're just grandpa, Facebook is gone. This is Instagram. So I said, no, sir, I'm going to mention Instagram. Amen. Stubborn people with the same thought patterns are slaves to their mind. It's a good line. Stubborn people with the same thought patterns are a slave to your mind. I've seen people in church, after 20 years, they'll talk the same way. You know, but it doesn't work like that, pastor. Okay, tell me which way it works. You're saying that for 20 years. You see, while they are still figuring it out, I was growing. Yes. Yes. Amen. I was producing. Amen. Amen. I, I, I didn't want to know whether, because God's word works regardless. Amen. You don't have to prove it, it works. Amen. You just plant the seed, it works. Amen. You may not understand, I don't have to, that's divine. Plant it, it works. Are you ready for the shocker? Oh, did I say 15 minutes? You want the shocker or not? Yes. We will leave you hanging here, but I want to show you that shocker. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Are you sure ready? Yes. You see, just watch. Now I need to pay attention to verse 38. The field is the world and the good seed. Read for me. The good seed. Are the sons of the kingdom. And the bad, the weeds are. Do you see the sons are involved? Do you see the daughters are involved? You see, when Satan plants the seed, he doesn't plant demonic spirit. That Greek word is he yours. It's not demonic beings. It is not spirit beings. It is real sons, real daughters, human beings. That means he, when he plants the weed, when you are sleeping, he will bring the wrong relationships and plant into your life. And you will derail your destiny. He will plant the wrong people because wrong people bring wrong habits. Yeah. Every habit you have came because of someone in your life. Yeah. You did not just pick it up. You admire wrong people. Yeah. And the wrong people when you are sleeping from God, when it's planted in your life, the sons of the evil one will come to come and influence the sons of the kingdom. If tonight there is a challenge, it is a challenge of the sons. Yeah. It is a challenge of the daughters. 
And tonight we made a promise to God. We will redeem them and clean them back one by one in Jesus' name. And those who are watching online, Jesus has paid the price to redeem you and claim you back. You know what God calls you? Do you know what God calls you? The scripture says he calls you as the sons of the kingdom. Can you tell your neighbor, you are the daughter of the kingdom, you are the son of the kingdom. He's not going to give up on you. He's not going to give up on you. You can feel that you are the most lousiest person on this planet or the church or whatever you want to think. He still calls you, you're the sons and the daughters of the kingdom. He's saying you belong to me. You don't belong to the devil. There is a challenge, there is a war that is going on. But I'm stating the fact now, you belong to me. You're the sons of the kingdom, you're the daughters of the kingdom. I'm not going to give up on you. Amen. While you're sleeping, but you're still, even if you're sleeping, I'm going to call you the sons of the kingdom. Amen. You see the love of God tonight. Amen. Regardless of where you stand. Regardless of where you stand. Fathers, if you are praying for your children, mothers, you are praying for the children. I want you to remember the seed that you have planted in them. They are the sons and the daughters of the kingdom. Sometimes I can't see it too when our children go through the challenge. But I have to remember what God said. They are the sons of the kingdom. You are the son of the kingdom. While you are sleeping, the enemy came and he tried to sow. And these are other friendships and relationships. So whenever the enemy wants to derail you, he plants people in your life. I got to work through. So one of the things that we have to navigate through in this season, it is navigating through the right relationships. Because the Bible says in Psalms chapter 1, verse 1, if you will not stand in the midst of the ungodly, if you do not sit with them, and if you do not walk in their counsel, in other words, all these three involves people in your life. Yes. Wow. Wow. Take a moment to stand up together and we're going to continue. I pray in the name of Jesus for those who are watching. Maybe you can stand up wherever you are st sitting and give some expressions for the kingdom right now. Would you take a moment? You say, Lord, I don't know what is going on, but probably there is a Holy Spirit surgery. There are many of you who have the potential of what God has called you for tomorrow. But today you are crying. Today you are struggling. Today you are crying probably like the testimony of David. Uh, oh, my uncles were there. Tonight I'm saying in the name of Jesus, the word of God is there for you right now. Amen. Willing to pluck out what the enemy is doing and to plan in what God is doing. It is a painful thing to let go of certain relationships. But that's how the sons of the evil one come. Because we tend to admire the relationship of the world higher than relationship with God. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 25, if you read the whole chapter, the Bible says, For those who are God's friends, He will teach you the secret of His covenant. God is waiting your friendship tonight. Will you take a moment right now, God? Remove the plant, the enemy seed. Remove it in Jesus' name. Remove it, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. Remove the desires for other things that is choking the word of God in me. Do a divine surgery right now, Father. I belong to you. I do not belong to myself. I do not belong to this world. God, let that be a surgery in the name of Jesus. We give no permission for the enemy to plan while I'm sleeping. The Bible says in Psalms 127 that God will give good sleep to his beloved. So your sleeping is protected by God. Not enemy can come and plan. So Father, in the name of Jesus, would you come under the umbrella of God? Come on. Come under the umbrella of God. Come under the umbrella of God. 
Lekeri behe brocho. Shanda brocho lo moho. Esikini. There is a, there is a, uh, there is a young woman. You are married. You don't have a child yet. But your worry is, when I give birth or when I do, you see the way the world is going through? Why let the child suffer? So you're holding back pregnancy, thinking of what is going to happen to the child. But God did not ask you to worry about that future. It is God's challenge. Your job is to be multiply and to be fruitful. Kabaheto. Promonde. Salamahabroto. I pray, you know, as the word of God is coming, as the spirit of God. There are many sons and daughters who are going through this challenge right now. You are stuck. Some are stuck in the rocky ground. Some are stuck in unfruitful ground. You are stuck in the choking ground. And you won't even dare to say it. But the Holy Spirit knows. He loves you. He can take it without telling anybody. He can remove the stones without telling anyone. He can do things without, without telling you. And that's what I want God to do. Lord, you don't have to tell me. Remove whatever that is not there, which don't have to be there. Remove it, God. The Bible says that God put Abraham in a deep sleep and he spoke to him. The Bible says God put Adam in a deep sleep and he took a rip out of him. God can take things out of you by allowing you to go into a deep sleep. Allow God to do a surgery inside your spirit man, inside your soul, inside your natural life, inside your relationship. Let God do it tonight. Ramandie. Let God show you how much He loves you. You are the son and the daughter of the kingdom. You are planted by the hands of Jesus. The Bible says, the son of man planted good seed. And you are the good seed. He planted by his hand. You are God's planting. It revealed to Isaiah. Isaiah was shown by God. You are the planting of the Lord. Jeremiah said, you are a well-watered garden. Jesus said, my father. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jesus said, remember. I'm the wine dresser. I'm the one who is trimming you up. Let every flesh drop out in Jesus name. Let every works of the flesh drop out in Jesus name. Let every secret seed of the enemy die in Jesus name. We pray the sons of the soil, the sons of the kingdom, the daughters of the kingdom will rise up in Jesus name. Let the rivers of living water be poured into the ground where the sons are hiding, where the sons are planted. Let it come forth in Jesus name. Shatari endo. Preteri bahayo. Pukana mahabrate. I call for those things which are not as though they are in the name of Jesus. Arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, come forth. The Bible is saying the world is waiting for the sons of God to be manifested. I come on in Jesus' name. Manifest. Out of this very church. Manifest. Out of this very church, out of this many ministry, many sons will become evangelists that will take the nations by storm. Praetorian day. You know, Bishop, you are all the time saying, but you're not doing, man. The school of evangelists, it shall delay no longer the next trip into Cameroon. These are the young sons and daughters who will come in because you're looking for the 30 something. But God is attracting the 16 year old. God is calling another Robinson who came when he was 16, who preached when he was 16. The school of evangelists. It shall delay no longer. Let every work of the enemy, let every secret planting 
come out in Jesus name every wrong relationship die in the name of Jesus every stubborn sin die in the name of Jesus every struggling addiction die in the name of Jesus Come on, give birth. Give birth to your destiny. Give birth to the spirit. Give birth to see yourself. You're walking with God. See yourself obedient. See yourself praying. See yourself touching the Bible. See yourself doing it. Piriya habrondo. Shilia habrate. Promohabai. Hirate. Kurumondo. Himahabrate. Sondo la shale behemo. I see many swords. Many weapons. Many swords are waiting here to be taken by the sons and daughters who are here. The sons of the kingdom. The daughters of the kingdom. Many swords are being placed on the ceiling. It is God is preparing. It can come down in any session. God is preparing. It can come down through worship. God is preparing to equip you with the armor of the Lord. Oh, maybe you are saying, my brother, there is nobody who can pray for me. Tonight in the name of Jesus, we are standing in the gap and prevailing for you. We are praying for you. Let our sons and daughters go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Proteriahe. Urakakananda Haka. Ikokakara Mahabroto. Uribi Hemlota. Irakaba Mahabro. Ilahakara Sataya. I see someone. I see a belt. And I see secret pills. It's a girl. I see secret pills. I don't want to illustrate it further. You're taking some tablets you shouldn't take. And God is forgiving you and releasing you. It will break out of your womb. It will not harm you anymore. The poison will be flushed out. I want you to be repenting very quickly. You're taking some stuff and you're hiding it in the belt. And it's crossing over your womb. In the name of Jesus, I pray God. And the Lord is releasing that forgiveness to you tonight. He's releasing that forgiveness to you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray secure my daughter's God. Secure their womb for the right man. Secure my son's God. Secure their seed for the right woman. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let there be a prayer covering over them. A covering of the kingdom. They belong to the soil of the kingdom. They are not a soil outside. They belong to the soil of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Shall I be uh, Come on. The Holy Spirit is not finished with us yet. I'm asking the Lord, are you done? He said, not yet. Are you done? He said, not yet. For the angels are going through the parameters. The angels are going through the garden. The angels are watching over your field. They are taking out what is not belong to you. They are taking out the snares of the enemy. They are taking out the planting of the dark ones. They are pulling out. They are taking out. Tonight cry out to Jesus God. Help me to overcome. Cry out to Jesus help me. Remove that seed of the enemy. I don't know why I'm struggling. I tell you why. Because the enemy came and sowed in your field while you were sleeping. Set our sons and daughters. 
free in Jesus name free in the name of Jesus let the power of the Holy Spirit flow let the cleansing stream of God flow let the founder of the blood flow you know there is a powerful demonic power deliverance is coming now in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus is coming down I see demons just living I just demon just letting go in Jesus name every foul spirit every unclean work of the enemy I command you in the name of Jesus leave these premises leave the sons and daughters leave them in the name of Jesus you know this village uh, bishop you are going there you are having a crusade the next one there is this village the witch doctor is casting a spell it's a very strong portion and the Lord is saying whatever you're going to eat in the next trip that you go in it must be vetted out by your cup bearer first you cannot just dive into food it has been cursed by the enemy they are trying to stop you yeah. your commission from God is to manifest the sons of God you know tell you listen guys listen we just honored him as a father it's time for the sons to fight come on let's pray covering let's pray let's pray let's pray you want the fathers to leave the sons and daughters have to fight they have to take the challenge they have to clear the way they got to fight the enemy you can come but we are standing together we are standing together in the name of Jesus no weapon which form against him shall prosper no food that is poison can come near you will cleanse by the blood of the lamb I pray in the name of Jesus all the demons sent by the witchcraft will go back to him and Lord in seven days he will pay it with his life Shahara Mahabrato this town this village is going to face the fear of the Lord because they are opposing you they are opposing the man of God they are opposing the light from coming now this witchcraft is manipulating weather patterns it is manipulating fire it is manipulating destruction from those who are helping you from those who are coming for the meeting and also accident by buses come on sons come on daughters take the weapons of your warfare let us show the enemy who we are let's show the enemy what happens when we pray pull down pull down the weapons pull down the works of the enemy pull down the mindset pull it down in Jesus name every snare every trick every person pull it out in Jesus name Hallelujah! 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 I need a mic. Come on, get a mic. Michael, come and lead in protection prayer. Come on. 
Come and join your heart. Oriya thara la ma sundoro lo bo shika thara la la mandehi. Shika thara la mandara la la mandoro lo bo shika thara la mandara la la basata. Oh Father, tonight we prophesy the rising of a mighty youth army that will walk in the fear of the Lord. Father, we pray as Jehoshaphat called the entire nation when the enemy is trying to encamp around them, but God, the people came as one voice. The Bible says that the men, the women, the children, the sons and the daughters sought the face of God. Father, we pray that this is the hour that the young sons and the young daughters will arise with strength that comes from heaven. Lord, we are saying in this conference that we do not want the gimmicks, we do not want the fake, but we want the authentic, oh God. We want sons and daughters that walks in the ways of God. We want sons and daughters who knows how to honor the fathers and the mothers. And we pray, you said in your word, that in the last days, before the second coming of our great God, that you will send the prophet Elijah to restore the hearts of the fathers to the children, the hearts of the sons, the hearts of the daughters to the hearts of the father. And we say, let it come in this conference. Let this be a catalyst, oh God, that from the United States of America to all around the world, let the voice of the Lord be heard. Let the trumpet be sounded. Lord, we pray that this is the hour that the sons and the daughters will run together with the fathers that we will pick up from the next generation and from the generation that is before. Let there be a unity of heart, a unity of mind. Oh God, we pray like what you did with Elijah and Elisha, what you did with Moses and Joshua, what you did with Paul and Timothy. We say, do it again, Lord God. Come on, arise, 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 arise. Come on. In the spirit, come on. In the spirit, come on. The enemy has no more power over our lives because we have planted the seed and we are standing in boldness, picking up the weapons, and we are fighting, knowing that the Lord is with us. We have courage and boldness, knowing that the Lord will enable us to overcome. Help us, Lord. Help this generation. We don't know what to be weak anymore. We don't want to be overcome by the world anymore. But we want to stand for your glory, O God. We want to stand and fight against the enemy. We will rise up in boldness. We will rise up in courage. We will rise up knowing that the God, the Father, is standing behind us and He's pushing us forward. We read in the Bible in so many instances when the army of the Lord, when the army of Israel went to a battle, the Lord was with them and He gave them victory. Hallelujah. We speak victory into the lives of the youth hallelujah hallelujah you are more than a conqueror and we speak hallelujah. victory into your lives hallelujah. thank you father every soul will be broken hallelujah. every addiction be broken hallelujah. in the name of jesus thank you god thank you god it is a new day it is a new rising Father, we want to worship you. Come on. Come on. Are you ready to shout hallelujah? Declare your victory. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. The Bible says, Let the weak say, I am strong. 
I tell you what the Hebrew says. Even the weak one must say, I am a warrior. Amen. That same strong in the Hebrew says they are warriors. This is what happens when we all get together and pray. No witchcraft can stand. Amen. There is no weak links, links in our team now. Amen. They all empowered. Amen. One chain. Amen. One Christ. Amen. One anointing. Amen. You will die if you draw yourself out of this link. Amen. The enemy wants to link you out. Kabat your name. That's what wolves will do. That's what they will try to pack and link out. Kad you no oshneai, rakamongai, rakane sa ero sutorobo. I pray for the members of this church to be covered by the blood of the Lamb. You know, church. Listen, I can feel one after another sons and daughters to come and take the mic and challenge the enemy. What happens when he come? The spirit of the Lord will come on. We will bash the enemy tonight. We're going to bash him tomorrow. We're going to bash him on Sunday. We're going to bash him in every session. Yeah. Until every seed, that stubborn seed, that is hidden so deep inside, is going to be pulled out and be delivered. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for tonight. Let the name of Jesus and only his name be so magnified. We give you all the glory for the things you have said. Through the worship, through the David, and through the speaking of your word now, yes, and through the prayer that you have shown us, and through every warrior yes. who's standing side by side with another man, with another woman. We thank you for revealing the works of the enemy against our spiritual father here. Yes. You love him and care for him. Yes. And you know, it, it, it's funny if you think about it. The ones who are praying for you on your left and your right, they are not big time. They are just your sons and daughters. But they represent the kingdom. That's how powerful. Father, I want to thank you. Surround this church with warriors. I pray for those families that are watching online. We pray for the same victory and protection of every Father of the house and the church, all those who are connected to this ministry and the network, we pray for God's redemption. Come over them, protect them from every evil one. We pray for their sons and daughters in the church who are struggling. We pray for God's delivering anointing to come over them. Tonight is the night. But remember, you plant the seed. You activate the kingdom. You activate the promises. And while you are sleeping, the angels are working on you. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a what? Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can sit down, please.